Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is June 27th, 2018. Thank you for tuning in again to another of our climate and clean energy analysis video blogs. So for today, what I'm going to do is talk about a forecast set of heat wave conditions and above normal temperatures for the United States during late June and early July. But before we before I do that, I'm going to talk a bit about the larger national and global climate context. And so what we have recently experienced is the warmest May in the United States climate record, according to temperature measurements starting in 1895 and running through the present day. So the most recent May, the, the past month, was the hottest on record for the United States. Now, this particular record is significant in and of itself, but what makes it more significant is the fact that this record occurred in the context of rising global temperatures and record warm global temperatures that recently occurred in 2016 as part of an ongoing global warming trend. So a record hot May by itself is notable, but it's even more notable in the context of larger human-caused climate change and global warming. Now looking ahead, what we see is that the United States is predicted to see above average to far above average temperatures over the coming 10 days. And what we're looking at here is a temperature anomaly map. Now this anomaly map shows above average temperatures in orange to red and below average temperatures in blue to purple. And to be clear, this, the, this model is using a baseline from 1979 to the year 2000, which already occurred in a period of time that saw globally above average temperatures. So, so the baseline average is already above average. So these above average temperatures that we see in this model are, are already on a warmer than normal baseline. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So what we see is that the United States in general stays above average in the forecast and we see a number of rather hot zones with 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, I'm sorry, 15 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit above average temperatures and in some regions, temperature, temperature spiking to 25 degrees Fahrenheit above average around the Great Lakes as the warming is, the above normal temperatures are predicted to move eastward toward the Great Lakes and the US Northeast and to remain in place in the Eastern US throughout early July and looks like these, these above average temperatures will, will remain in place in a heat wave type pattern through the 4th of July before moderating a little bit and then shifting again toward the west where we would see again see much warmer than normal temperatures popping up over the desert southwest through the Pacific Northwest and in through Montana and, and Western Canada. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this model and look at how these temperatures translate at the surface. So for the mid period, what we see is a large region of 90 and 100 degree temperatures settling in over the central US and on up in through the Northeast, and in some cases stretching into Southern Canada. And what we see during the later period is that in the forecast, these temperatures shift westward toward the Western US and up toward Montana with above 100 degree temperatures stretching in through the Central Valley very intense, potentially up to 100 degree temperatures in the Death Valley region and 110 range temperatures 
in Arizona and possibly parts of, of southern Nevada with 100 degrees temperatures stretching up into Montana, Utah, and other western states. So overall, this is a, a pretty intense heat wave situation, but I'm going to look at some of the underlying factors. Now, one of the, the driving factors for the present U.S. heat wave is prevailing much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures surrounding the United States from east to west. Now, this is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. So when I click in a region, it will show above average or below average sea surface temperatures. And what we see is that off the west coast, sea surface temperatures are predominantly above average as they are off the U.S. east coast and into the Gulf of Mexico. And these warmer than normal sea surface temperatures are having a knock-on effect that help to elevate temperatures on land. But what they also do is they circulate a lot of extra atmospheric moisture over certain regions. And in particular, these high levels of atmospheric moisture have been circulating over the eastern U.S. And when you combine high heat with high atmospheric water vapor levels, you end up with very high heat index values. And so over the coming days, over the central and eastern U.S., we can expect rather miserable heat index conditions. And I'm going to just give you a, a bit of a comparison here. So for today, heat indexes over parts of the Sahara Desert are expected to be around 40 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and that, that gives you a feels-like index, so, so what it feels like outside. So, so for context, uh, a 40 degrees Celsius reading is a comparable reading to what it feels like in over parts of the Sahara Desert during the peak of heating during the day. I'm going to go ahead and advance this. So for today, we see Sahara desert-like heat indexes over the central U.S. due to high temperature and high humidity. In some cases, these heat index values are hitting around 108, 109. And as we advance in time, this wave of, of high heat index values moves north and east toward the Great Lakes. So by the 29th, we have above 100 degree, above 105 degree heat index values over on the shores of the Great Lakes, and then by the 30th, moving eastward toward the northeast and toward Canada. And then by July 4th, we have above 100 degree heat index values near the Niagara Falls region, over parts of the northeast near, near the Great Lakes with a very high heat index values over parts of uh, New York and near the Washington, D.C. area, and also maintaining in through the Mississippi River Valley region. So these are, are rather extraordinary heat index values commensurate with, with a high misery type heat wave condition. And so those living in the Northeast and in the Central and eastern U.S., particularly around the Mississippi River Valley and, and in the southeast, need to remain aware that, that heat wave conditions could become quite intense. And, and those in the northeast are likely to experience very high heat index values as well uh, that are uncharacteristic of the region and, and that these high heat index values are likely to stretch into Canada. So to sum up, we have, according to these model forecasts, a rather severe set of heat wave conditions that appear to be settling in over the next three to 10 days.